Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today's build is a very special one and I'll explain why. A viewer reached out to me, Nick Milliken, who lives in Texas uh, near Corpus Christi. And he and his wife every year put out a mailbox at the end of their driveway, painted red, and it's Santa's mailbox. And when you put a letter in this mailbox, uh, snow comes out the top and it makes a sound and it's really cool. But the cool part is that Nick and his wife personally answer every letter that goes into that mailbox and send it back to the child that put the letter in the mailbox. And they do this all on their own time uh, with their own funds. So Nick asked me to make a letter opener to open letters from Santa. And when I saw that, I thought I had to do this build. So guys, join me, check out this build, stay till the end and you'll see how to support Nick and his wife in their efforts to bring joy to children. Let's take a look. So of course, we're gonna make this letter opener out of Damascus. I'm starting with eight layers of 1095 and seven layers of 15 and 20. Let's stack it up and get it welded. We started with 15 layers. My plan is to cut this up into three, restack it so we end up with 45 layers. Here I'm sprinkling on a little borax to the billet. That ensures that I get a great forge weld and I don't get any scale between the layers because that would inhibit the forge weld. Like all Damascus projects, I like to press the layers together for three heats before I start to try to draw it out. Now that we know that all the layers are forge welded together, we can rotate the billet 90 degrees so we can square it up before we start to draw it out. Now I'm drawing the bar out long so that I can cut it up into three, grind all the surfaces clean, restack it, and get it back in the forge for the next heat. So here I've already cut it up, ground the surfaces clean and re-welded it. Now we're getting ready for our second round. Now that it's forge welded, I need to draw it out into a blade-like shape, but one end is going to be turned in the lathe, so I need to make that kind of cigar-shaped. Now you're starting to see that flat blade emerge from this billet. I have to be careful and make sure I know where the layers go so I get the right pattern. Now I'm trying to round out that one end just so it's easier and I have less work to do on the lathe.
Before I take this to the lathe, I go to my grinder and remove all the scale, just so it's easier on my tool bits. I also need to reduce the diameter here so that it will actually fit into the lathe. Well, so far I forged this out. Um, the blade of the letter opener is kind of flattened here. And I've got this cylinder. So these are going to be the pommel, the spacer, uh, and then the taper here. So what I want to do is be able to put this all the way into the chuck. So I'm just going to take this down um, so that I can flip it around. And then I'm going to drill the hole through the whole thing so I can thread all of the um, quarter 20 uh, through the center. So I've taken this down on the lathe just so it fits inside my lathe. Um, now I'm going to just reduce to these dimensions and drill the hole that's going to go all the way through that's going to get threaded. So the first thing I'm going to do is drill the hole and then I'll start to uh, taper this here. That's going to get tapered and then we'll do these two pieces and then we'll just cut them off. If you're curious why that cut is there on the piece, I was going to just cut off the blade part on the bandsaw and I started doing that and then realized I forgot to put the taper in, so I better do that first. I don't know what it is, but to me, taking stock down on the lathe is very satisfying. The piece on the right here, that's going to be the spacer. The piece on the left, that's going to be the pommel. And then the hole is going to get drilled all the way through the spacer, but only partway through the pommel. Here we are so far. So I've got these guys done on the lathe and I've drilled and tapped that um, afterwards and centered that on the lathe. So now this will be my main, obviously the blade. This screws into it. We've got the spacer that just slides on there. There'll be the handle that I'm going to turn and then the pommel like that. That's what the letter opener is going to look like. Now it's time to put some shape on the handle. So we're going to taper this to a point. Obviously take this down quite a bit because, you know, it's got to go into a letter. Um, but I like how this has uh, come up here. I think that's kind of cool. Now we're just going to taper it down and then to a point. And then bevels. I ground out the profile on the grinder, but forgot to turn the camera on. Here we're putting layout fluid so that we can put some markings on it, and then we're going to grind our bevels. I'm doing a dagger grind here, so there's actually four bevels with a central ridge. And this actually reminded me a lot of the Loki dagger. So if you haven't seen that build, maybe go take a look at that one. These very narrow dagger grinds are really tough. The bevels are so narrow, I had a hard time figuring out where to put my fingers so I didn't drag them across the belt. Of course, I'm using all Broadback Ironworks abrasives. If you need some abrasives, check the link in the description. Okay, let's do some heat treating.
So here they are after hardening and tempering. We harden these just so that we would get a good Damascus pattern um, for the etching. All right, let's do the final grinding. I'm starting my post heat treat grinding here with a 120 grit belt. Later I'm gonna move up to a 220 and then all the way to a 400. This is one of Broadbeck's P-Flex belts, and this one's a scalloped belt, and it's actually only an inch wide, and this is great for doing curves, like the one in the taper of this blade. And now every knife maker's favorite chore, a little bit of hand sanding. So I just put a short piece of uh, quarter 20 thread in here just so that I could spin it in the drill and then I can sand this part. It kind of looks like something out of a horror movie, but it'll work. I was really happy that this worked so well. I didn't want to hand sand this part of the blade. All right, we got these all polished, buffed, ready for the acid. So here's the blade and the fittings after they're dipped in the acid and buffed. They're buffed because they're gonna get hot blued. Let's get into it. So I'm starting the bluing salts. This is basically potassium nitrate salt. It comes in kind of a grainy salt. Um, I've already melted this once um, and tried it. So it's, it's solidified into a block. So now I'm heating it up. This will liquefy. We're gonna heat this up to around 640 degrees. And then we're gonna immerse the parts in it for a minute or so and they will turn a nice blue color. So let's heat this up. So I got it hovering right around 640 degrees now. <clears throat> I'm going to put the pieces in. They'll stay in there for about a minute. And then they'll immediately come out and get doused in cold water. So there they are after being blued. I love the color. And of course you can't do this on an actual blade because of course the 650 degree temps uh, is gonna ruin your temper. But because this is just a letter opener, I don't really need it to be hard. So now that I know the color, Let's move on to the handle material. I think I've decided to go with this piece of synthetic. It's kind of a black and red, and I think it'll go nice with the blue. So we're going to cut this, make it roundish, and then we're gonna turn it on the lathe. This resin material machined really well on the lathe. It sure did make a mess though.
The more time I spend using the lathe, the more I really like it. It's just a really fun tool to use. And something about taking something down and tapering something on the lathe, like I said, really satisfying. And now to drill that hole so that we can put it on the threaded rod. Okay, we're ready for final glue up. Thanks for joining me on this build, folks. I had a great time making this letter opener. I love the way it turned out with the bluing. Um, so I'm really happy and I hope Nick and his wife love it and use it when they open all the letters to Santa. And for all you viewers, please go look in the description below. Go check out their Facebook page. There's a GoFundMe link down there that way you can support them and help them bring joy to children. Thanks guys for joining me. Go check out those links. We'll see you on the next one.